Well, hello there guys, Anxious Cynic back again with another Monomir tutorial. This one's going to be a little bit different because I'm kind of just going to break down what I did to create the little scene that you saw up front there. Because this is a tutorial about a particle effect that I got asked about some time ago. I don't really remember how long it was. And I was like, I'll try it. So I finally got around to trying it. And I think for my first attempt, the result turned out okay. But uh, I don't know, you guys be the judge and I'll show you what I did break it down the best I can and if you want to improve on it then uh, yeah maybe it'll give you the template that you need to make something even better. So anyway there was quite a few things going on here I just made up this little scene as you can see here I don't have the lighting turned on so ooh, it looks so much better uh, I just wanted to kind of have a context to show off the effect instead of just some flatlands kind of stuff so uh, anyway the the main thing we're looking at here is this particle effect so basically this is what it is. It's a particle effect here. I've got an emitter and I have it attached to the uh, sword here, technically parented. So I'm gonna go over here to the project library. We're gonna, ooh, not zoom out there. Here we go, click this. I'm gonna go to open editor and you'll see here that we have all these settings set up. Now you'll notice here that the particles are set to spawn in the sphere. What I originally wanted was it to spawn in a box and I had the box like shaped or sized for, for the sword itself. But the problem is they don't rotate with the sword. So with the sword up like this, the actual particle uh, emitter box was like right here. It was just this box that kind of went with the sword horizontally in the original pose that I had it in. And then when I rotated the sword, it doesn't go with it. So I had to compromise and make this little sphere. You can change it if you want to. It depends on, you know, what you're putting this effect on but if it's going to be a rotating object then you'll want to use a sphere or a cube. I kind of felt like the sphere worked better. You can only scale it up so much because it'll be spawning way out from the object. So there are some limitations but I felt like it was close enough with the way I set it up here that for just like an average item that a character would be holding it looks pretty okay. And you know as far as the texture here for the particles I think they could probably be improved. But like I said, for my first attempt, I think it turned out okay. So if you wanted to customize this, there's a few things that you would want to do. So we're in the particle editor here, as you can see. And the first thing, you know, besides the uh, the radius here to make it bigger or smaller for where it spawns, I have it set by default to 5.5. Uh, you have the destroy particles at a time after spawn, and that's at three seconds. You can make that less or more depending on what your usage is. Uh, I experimented with all these different settings and I kind of found this to be the best for this effect the way I thought it should look. So again, if you have a different use, then you can of course do whatever you need to do. So with the particle selected here, I'm going to go down here into the options and what I have here is the custom texture that I made for the sprite because it's going to be, you know, a sprite instead of an object or anything. And I just made the custom texture and basically each square here i'll go ahead and show you i'm gonna bring up my photo software this is a program called affinity photo that i recently got and i've been using instead of photoshop uh, i kind of like it and i've been practicing with it and that's why i wanted to use it so you can't really see much here but let me go ahead and pop in another layer and we'll make it uh black so you can see all right so here is our stuff and i actually had a grid that i was using to make this so it kind of looks unorganized right now but essentially this is our particle sheet and if I pop on back over to my animator you'll see here this little grid I designed it to have a 25 by 25 pixel grid so each little square is its own image and my animator is using it from this point linearly down to the end point to create this you know electrostatic effect so that's essentially what I did there so technically on this sheet here, you can come in and erase these marks that I have and create your own if you want to, or create your own particle sheet from scratch. It doesn't really matter. You mainly just want it to be evenly squared. You know, this is a hundred pixels by a hundred pixels. So what I did is I made it four by four technically, you know, 25 goes into 104 times. So that gives us four squares here and four squares vertically. So you can make it like 20 pixels and then you would have five squares across and five squares down. It, you know, it doesn't really matter. It just depends on the size of the particles. So uh, that's basically how I created the particle sheet. And then, like I said, I imported that into my animator here under the textures. 
browse and I got that up and then I just scaled the frame width here. If you do that, you'll see that the grid changes. So I made it 25 by 25, which is how I designed the particles. And then I basically just played with the animation speed here. Uh, I did a few different ways and I felt like this one looked the best in my opinion. So I just have it varying between 10 to 30 frames per second. So that way it doesn't look too similar for all of the little animations. Uh, and I have it set to loop. So that way it's constantly moving. It's not stopping or doing anything in between and looking kind of wonky. So uh, that way you just had this constant electrostatic uh, animation going on and I just left the uh, movement here basic I didn't drop down the speed to change any of the individual parameters and I didn't want it to move too much so I just have it kind of balancing itself out where it's just sort of it's just pretty much like staticky holding off where it spawns it moves a little bit but not too much but of course you know like I said if you're doing anything in particular all this stuff can be customized and you can do whatever you want with it I had to scale it down quite a bit because the actual images that I had for the particles was pretty big. So uh, they're scaled down pretty small here. So that might be something you would want to change if you made your own. You can do, you know, 10 by 10 squares of textures for your particles. And I just have it colored and uh, stuff like that. So you can kind of see here, I have just a slight scale change there, making it so it's sort of getting a little bit smaller every time they spawn over time. But, you know, again, it's just little touches like that. I don't really know how much of a difference they really make, but to me, it just seemed to kind of deliver the effect the way I envisioned it. Oh, hey guys. This is just your friendly reminder from Minecraft Steve here, just telling you that Anxious Cynic now has merch, and you should go buy it. It's on Amazon.com, and all you gotta do just go to the link in the description and it'll take you to one of our awesome t-shirts. For instance, this shirt here. The I Animate Pixels t-shirt. Did, did I do it? Is that what I was... Was this thing even in focus? Is anyone in there? Hello? Hello? One thing I didn't do for this sequence, I actually had it set up, but then I got rid of it because I was unhappy with the way it looked. But what I might would recommend here is spawning a light. So we have here the item. This is the sword. This is our particle creator. So you could spawn a point light and uh, it's going to come down here. Let's drag it up and we'll attach this to the item as well. And you're not going to want it to be too powerful. Let's go ahead and close this out. Uh, you want it to be pretty low but you can spawn a light to so that you know this is an electricity effect so it might be casting light onto Steve uh, so maybe turn the fade size up and bring this pretty far down you might want to give it a little bit of color or something you can't really see it here because I don't have that on but uh, yeah now you can so if I do this so you see there it's kind of illuminating Steve I didn't do that for my little test thing like I said but I would recommend it if uh, you're gonna use this effect and of course I have the glow turned on for the sword here and uh, I got some feedback before I made this and I kind of agree with it the sword glows a bit too much but of course that also depends on what effect you're going for if the glow is strictly related to the electricity then maybe that's a bit much the unfortunately though the only way to change that is up here in the render settings where if I go here I can turn that glow intensity down and I think it looks a little better, maybe around like 60, maybe 50%. But that means that your glow is going to be changed for everything in your scene. So it kind of depends on what kind of effect you're going for and what you're wanting to do to uh, sell your effect. Because it might change everything you have in your scene, unfortunately. For me, I felt like it was a fair compromise just to leave it at 100% because it looks cool. All right, so as usual, what I'm gonna be doing is having this particle emitter, I have it saved. Let's go ahead and open that back up. I clicked saved here and saved my custom particle. I will be supplying it in the description, a link in the description of this video, so that you yourself can download it and use it for your animations. So I get asked a lot how to do the download and import process and everything. So I'm gonna go ahead and cover it in this tutorial. So if you already know that, then see you later I guess but if not keep watching and I'll show you how you'll go about downloading this file and implementing it into Minimator. All right so when you click the link in the description this is the page that should come up and what it is is a zip folder with the 
particle file from Minimator and the texture file for the actual like particles that you're going to be using with that file. So when you're on this page, you just come up here to this little download button, click that. It's going to do this little business here and then you're just going to hit OK on save. OK, so this is the folder that I put my anxious Cynix charged item rig file in. And as you can see, it's a zip folder. So that means you can't just use it straight out of this. You have to extract it. So what I'm going to do is right click on this, hit extract all. And then it's going to ask me where I'm going to put it. And I think I'm just going to go ahead and let it go there. Extract. And it's going to open up and then now I have my files available to me. So technically what I can do here is just go into Minimator. I'm going to say I want a new particle system. Let's just go down here and drag it over. So here's the default particle that we have. And then I can go over here. Particle editor. Open editor it was already open. Uh, and then we just have the default here. And I can click on this button here to import a particle. And then this brings up the default Minimator particle folder, but I don't have it there. So what I'll do is just navigate to where I save those files. So as you can see here, I'm in that same folder and now we have the extracted folder. I'll click on that and then all we'll see here is the actual particle file. So I click that, click open, and then there you go. I've imported the lightning effect. Alternatively though, what I can do if I wanna make this easier in the future, let's say this is something I may be coming back to every now and then, let's go ahead and delete this. So we no longer have that, let's get rid of that file or window, anyway. All right, so what I've done here is I've got both of my folders up. This is my Minimator 1.2.0 uh, install folder. It's got all the Minimator files and everything in it. And then over here is my rig for the particles you know the same thing we extracted anyway so what i'm going to do in my minimator file is you have this particle folders here so i'm going to open that and then that's that list that we saw earlier from minimator opening the same folder so all i'm going to do is just drag this i'm going to go ahead and select both of these by dragging and selecting both of them and i'm going to click them drag them over move particles pop them into there i don't really know for sure that you need to bring over the texture file but just to avoid any unwanted issues while we're making this video, that's what I'm gonna do. So now, let's hope it works since uh, I did this while it was already open. I don't know if you need to restart Minimator or not, but anyway, so we're gonna go ahead to the workbench, click on this, the little particle creator, and you'll notice there in our little presets options, we now have the charged item particles. So no longer do I have to go and open it up separately or anything, it's gonna be right here in this list. Create. And then right there, right when you put it into the Dango program, you're going to have those particles. So those are the ways you can do it. That's how you can download it. That's how you can extract it. That's how you can add it manually. And that's how you can add it to your presets. All right. So that should cover everything you need to know. If you have any other questions, then either I'm dumb or you're dumb. And I guess we can just accept ourselves and live with it and learn to be happy. So hopefully that covered it all, guys. Thanks for watching. I hope you like this video. I hope you like this effect. If you use it, make sure you let me know. And that's going to be it. So thanks for watching, guys, and stay cynical. Is that a good tagline? Should I tell you guys to stay cynical? I don't know if that's a really, like, I don't know if that's a positive message to be sending out. Hmm. I don't know. You tell me. It sounds kind of cheesy. I'm going to have to say, it sounds kind of cheesy to me. I want to say something like that and it'd be cool, but it's really, really hard not to be cheesy. And again, like I said, I don't know if it's like a negative message to send out, so that's kind of a problem. Anyway, whatever. Whatever.